Social Scene of the Flashing and the Graduation of the Auditorium. If you're interested in going to the Auditorium of Overflow, we will be flashing the day of graduation in there.
been a roller coaster fueled by academic, athletic, and personal challenges. Although the past few days of our high school experience have been bittersweet, we are excited to see what the future holds. We wouldn't be here today without the support given to us from all of you. We'd especially like to acknowledge our parents for the support and cheering us on that they always do, and for being our own personal taxi guys. We'd also like to take, thank our teachers for pushing us to the limits we never thought we'd reach. Throughout every sleepless night and the countless hours of procrastination, we finally made it to today. So here we are to celebrate the graduation of an outstanding class. A class overflowing not only with knowledge and ambition, but with love for each other, the Fort Morgan High School class of 2017. Thank you and welcome to our graduation. today, very special group of seniors. They are fully aware that we have spent, I have been honored to spend the last six years in a row with these, with these seniors. I have spent half of their lives in education. Um, would like to thank a few people in particular. Mr. Dale Knapp, uh, where are you Dale? I used to have a lot more hair before I met you too. <laughs> but this truly is a special group. If you look all the way back to fourth grade, uh, our state testing, this group of students set benchmarks every single year from fourth grade all the way through as the highest marks. Fourth, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, all the way through. Truly, all 167 years. And graduates, I, I would like to say I will speak for everybody. I say that we are extremely proud of your accomplishments and your journey to be sitting here today. Thank you, seniors. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Fort Morgan High School Jazz Band, led by Mr. LeBaron.
Dennis Band. And now, Morgan High Singers, directed by Mr. Nathan.
thank you for working with my At this time, I'd like to draw your attention to our open chair that we have in the front row. Kevin Chu Bellion passed away from natural causes on March 27th. He would have been occupying that chair today. Fort Oregon High School family misses his smile and enthusiasm. I'd like to read to you our student, our senior representative, Shine Ferro, who wrote, What happened with Kevin was very tragic. It is definitely not what we expected. Kevin had a bright future ahead of him. He, is, he so deserved way more than he got. Kevin was smart, he was funny, and he was a wonderful soccer player. We are soccer family and this is your number 12. So we love you and miss you along with everyone else here. Fly to the top of the At this time, I would like to welcome his family, his mom, Emily, Marco, and brother Jesse.
Heather Hoffman. For a minute, it totally rubbed me the wrong way. I kept on walking. 
and thinking to myself, oh, she doesn't get it. She's not suffering like I am. Should have done long ago. Okay, so maybe that's a little dramatic. I'm totally kidding, Paula. But on that course, I really did feel weak. I was entirely moved by what my body wanted, and in that moment, it was to stop running. However, her words planted a seed in my mind. As I walked more and realized, hey, I'm feeling a little better than I thought, that seed grew and grew until finally, I was running again. I could do it, I just had to give a little more effort than what I was used to. I didn't walk again for the rest of that race, and even finished running kind of fast, which technically isn't a good thing because it means I had more game than I thought. But finishing was a real accomplishment. I never walked during the race again. Feeling how draining yet so rewarding giving that amount of effort was really shaped my life. Graduates, as we either enter college, the workforce, serving our country or wherever you may be going, it is that feeling we have to hold on to. We've reached the finish line. It feels so good to say we've reached the finish line. But now, a new race begins for us. Class of 2017, the race of life will not be an easy one. There will be key points. But whatever your barn is, your creek, or your mountain, just remember that you never really know how close you are. And that is precisely the reason you just have to keep going. If you stop to walk half a mile away from the finish line, you may just get patronized by someone passing you. So, persevere through the tough times and keep running your race. Show the world that the class of 2017 really is a star class. Thank you. Although this is my personal perception of what being a senior is, 
I feel like the same is true for a lot of you guys here. Like, some days you might say something stupid, and that's part of that still change. Or maybe some days you need to sit on your mom's lap because you're scared, and that's part of that spot. And then one day when you're all grown up, you need to cry as if you're free. And that's okay. Because when you grow old, it's kind of like a funny. Or like a green inside of a tree trunk. Or like little wooden dolls that fit one inside of the other. Each year inside of the next one. That's how being 11 years old is. You know, you're 11. Not right away. It takes a few days, weeks even. Sometimes even months before you say it. 11 is a And you don't feel smart 11. Not at your own fault. That's the way it is. As I said earlier, this is how it feels to be a senior. You don't feel like a true senior. Not right away. It takes a while to finally feel like a true senior. A smart senior. Not until you're almost a graduate, like we are now. My purpose in saying this is not to criticize or convince people that the only way for a person to conquer is to be mature, but rather to say that everything is concurrent within everyone. Even for all the people sitting here in the stands, the same is true for you guys too. Some believe that what we experience changes the person who we are, and that you're completely different from the day you began, whatever, and for us, high school. But what if, instead of those experiences changing who we are, they build on each other, like the little wooden dolls, year after year? What I mean is that beneath all of us, there's more than just being a senior, or being a graduate. We're just saying junior, sophomore, freshman, eighth, seventh, sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second, first, and kindergarten kids that you want to work. So allow yourself to be that kindergarten that you speak to kids and know nothing about them, and then 10 seconds later you're playing with your best friend. You can't do anything but yourself. Allow yourself to be that seventh grader that you used to believe they could be anything and everything in the world. An astronaut, a surgeon, a suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, allow yourself to be anything you feel and want to. For once, you allow yourself. No, not only yourself, but others to see this. Your journey from here on out will be everything and more. So, I dare all of you to recognize and accept these things about ourselves. And remember, there's so much more to each and every one of us here. And the fact that you get to experience this is what makes all the difference. Benny B. Beachy We came, we saw, but we haven't talked to you yet. And that's okay.
As we moved up from the schools to Baker and saw for the first time many of our classmates, the 100 days fell away, and it became more important to count down to breaks. Thanksgiving, Christmas, spring break, and finally, summer. For the teachers who pushed us through the start of hormones and the first taste of freedom, thank you. Middle school was a combination of counting down to breaks, let's face it, that never really goes away, and counting down to high school. We glimpsed what could be, and people started to split into clicks. The athletes became serious, and nerves became more confident. We learned about life, and we learned about MLA formatting. Some of us anticipated a trip to Washington, D.C., where for the first time, our parents were not coming. March of 8th grade, anxiety filled us as we started to determine our futures. What clubs would we join? What classes would we take? Would we even see any of our friends? We counted down to that summer as we counted down to the start of the school year. For seeing our potential, we must thank the middle school teachers. High school is nothing but countdowns. For some, it is to the sports season in each game. For others, the next band concert. Some for tests, and for a few unlucky souls, all three things at once. The planning and organization teachers have been shoving down our throats for ages finally came in handy. Sometimes the countdown was simply to when lunch began. We as a class have seen some different schedules and the fine tuning of things. How could any of us forget the two lunches or the countless fire drills? Together, we have faced muddy parking lots before graduating to the paved one, only to have speed bumps rust upon us. <laughs> that has swung in still the loved ones, and the miracle of life has lost others. Some of us can say we are a well-connected class, and others have no idea who I am. But the memories are the same. Whoever said senior year was the best year of their life was probably lying. It is a nerve-wracking experience of perfecting completion of deadlines, whether those are drawstins, pictures, scholarships, colleges, and last but not least, the design of a number. It is a proud day when the numbers go up in the comments, and we watch them fall day by day. Many parents have pounded down with dread, and some with belief. Nostalgia has attacked his full force time and time again, but the dazzling future keeps us at full speed. For the teachers who are sane enough to teach high schoolers, thank you. May your lessons never be forgotten. For the teachers who have spent hours at the school, for activities, grading, tutoring, thank you. For the admin who followed us from the middle school to the high school, and those who are already here, thank you for caring enough to pull us into your office. For the secretaries, the kitchen staff, and the janitors, we as a class appreciate your silent help. For every miscellaneous person who impacted a single one of us, thank you. Finally, for the parents who were there for every stumble, for the ones who weren't, but helped us become who we are, good or bad, for the parents who didn't have to be, but stepped up anyways, we stand here for you and your accomplishments. Today, as you count down to when your child walks across the stage, and then count down to when you can escape and get onto the fun stuff, do not feel bad, because our whole education is on a countdown. And we are proud to be in this final one for now. God bless you all, and thank you. It is my honor today to announce our guest speaker. It's been my honor to work with him five years in the middle school. And all the things I can say about him. But the one thing I can say with 100% accuracy is he creates lifelong bonds with students. The last thing I'll say is nobody can use the term crap as poetic as Mr. 
Show. Are you all today? Mr. Wayne Brewer, stand up. Hey, don't come out with him. He's the guy that hired me. We should move, don't you think? Thank you for sharing this special day with me in 2017. This is our final class together, our final lesson. There are many exceptional talented students in this class. Be sure to thank your parents for your kindness and support for this year right now. Thank you to my true loves my life, or wife right, Janine. My son Jonathan and my daughter Amy. People will cross your path and change your lives forever. I hope I change your life as much as you change mine. Why not me is a question I want you to grapple with throughout this speech today. We will sit patiently during this ordeal and we'll be thinking about what's coming up afterwards. I'm asking you, no baby, I'm telling you to live this moment today because this is your day. Lots of thoughts have gone through this little mind as, as I was preparing this speech. Some of you have known for 12 plus years. One of the 19. I have seen both through success, failures, sadness, happiness, resisting peer offering, and staying true to yourself. I had a privilege to hear your voice crack in middle school as you did puberty. That was, without a doubt, a highlight of my teaching career. And now I'm done. So today is your day. And I'm going to make this as special as possible for you today. Today will be about your life's endeavors. I hope it's inspiring and helpful. So here goes some heavenly, wisdomly words for the folk that I want you to ingest, digest, and refer to this. What separates success from failure, happiness from unhappiness? This is what I found to be true. You gotta to want to be successful. Put your mind and energy into something that benefits you and other people. Invest in your mind, body, and spiritual life. Spend time and getting to know yourself. I challenge you to simply think about you. Who am I? What am I here for? What matters most? What matters least? Get to know you. No visitors. You are stuck with you. Try, no do, to become the best version of yourself. Separate from people and things that are dragging you down. That's what all successful people do. Why not you? School, school is all you've ever known. How many of you have going to college now? Raise your hands. Man, are you crazy? <laughs> now, it gets interesting. You will face many challenges on a regular basis. When we did your day, you left off a bunch of ants trying to find that hidden treasure. You run over one another, you run by one another. Some of you will panic, some of you won't give a damn. Some of you will be confident and you'll be relaxed and you will go for the day. Relax, life gets harder. <laughs> Everybody does. There will be challenges and setbacks in your life and it's all how you deal with them. Keep things in perspective. Thank God for your challenges and let it be let that make you become a person of passion and empathy. I need to <laughs> Be gentle when you have fun with yourself. Being gentle doesn't mean to be soft or undisciplined. It's realizing your faults and weaknesses and dealing with them. Forgive yourself when you make a mistake. If you make the same mistake twice, you're now creating a habit. Mistakes and failures can truly make you a better person as long as you let the educational component be present. Adversity is a good thing. 
It allows you to get to know yourself at a deep level. I have become a much of person in my life. You know my story. I'm so fortunate to shake me through who I am today. I like struggling. It motivated me. I liked it. It really did motivate me. And I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I didn't mind it first. It made me post drill. I learned a great deal about myself and how to figure out what to fix and how to fix it and make me a better person. Grow up with someone who's going to push you to the person she wants to become. There will be moments in your life when you want to give up on your dream. Fight back. In life, you will get kicked. Kick back. Go, go the distance. Persistence is a habit. So is quitting. Fight resistance. Resistance does not want you to win. It's a long, worthwhile journey. It all depends on how you want to feel the situation that you're in. I moved a thousand miles from Arkansas to pursue my running career. It brought me to you. I lived on a covered porch in Alamosa, Colorado, and was a better winner. My teammates made me available for growing up today. This just made me get to know myself on a deep, intimate level. Surround yourself with people that you want to become. If you want to go away the gift of God, life, that's your choosing. Nobody else's. The good or best with the tongue of running and teaching. Hope that I use it at a high level to make him proud. I ran over 20,000 miles of my journey, and I stopped here in Fort Worth to make a journey with you. And I hope it was a highly successful one. If you're afraid of criticism, you will live your life doing nothing. Nothing. If you're one of the greatest, people will be envious or jealous of you and they will criticize you. Go for it anyway. Piss them off. <laughs> to afford criticism is to do nothing and be nothing. First, we make a choice. Second, our choices make us. You will make people talk hurt because they wish they possess your determination. How did they give the delayed gratification? Enjoy the process of this long journey before you. Life is not a dress rehearsal. This is your final act. There's no do-overs. If you look at all the great statues in the world, all of them were criticized. Become a statue. Don't become a critic. You see, you have to be no statues and critics. Be a person who does great things for human kind. The ultimate outcome of anyone's life is a matter of personal choice. Our thinking creates a uh, pattern of success. Develop a set of core principles that you are not willing to compromise. Principles separate success from failure, happiness and unhappiness. Worry destroys happiness. Comparison is destroyed. Self-doubt, gossip, laziness, fear, excuses, negative thinking, ingratitude, jealousy are all stories of happiness. Now flip these to excitement, acceptance, confidence, ambition, risk-taking, ownership, positive thinking, gratitude, integrity, and loyalty. Which side do you want to go home on? I am very consistent in my life. I know exactly who I am. I am not going to compromise my principles to satisfy anyone here on earth. This is who I am. If you don't like it, deal with it. Period. That's the attitude you have to have in life. A true friend will always have to hold another friend to a higher standard. In the end, both benefit greatly and others who benefit from your own you. I respect myself a great deal, and you need to respect yourself as well. And Dominic or see it, and you start making your way up here, please. Thank you. But I got one more thing to tell you before we do this game. I'm about to embarrass you. A principle that I think is very important in your life is self-discipline. This begins with the mastery of the mind. Oh, still, man. No, not yet. Not yet. Not today. Yeah. It's a thought process. You can learn how you can learn how to control your thinking if you control how you think. You cannot control how you act if you cannot control how you think. Self-discipline is a bridge that from what you are to what you want to become. Today's action becomes tomorrow's results. Self-discipline strengthens the heart and mind. Dignity, honor, wealth, influence, and authority are all principles of this one principle. And now, oh my God. 
Back when I was little, I had a stress. How many had a stress? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. So, uh, I came up with this brilliant idea one day. I'm going to write down the building. Smart or stupid? Huh? Stupid? How come? It is stupid. How come? So I wrote a poem about it. This is a true story about it. The tricycle and the hill. You ready? I approach the big hill, looking for that almighty thrill. But it's a saddle, feet on the pedals. As, my, as I make my way downwards, I begin to look upward. Getting pain and piss feet down the hill, I built a big old shrill. Make a mistake. Too late. Can't contemplate. Please don't sticker. I don't play goddamn stickers. <laughs> Can't you see? You want to be like me. The lesson to the hill. Common sense should have told me otherwise. So a word from the wise. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Turned out to be the demise of my mind. I used to be more for this event. Now all I can do is repent. Every decision you make is an action. Hence, there's going to be a reaction. Think long term or your most important decision and act on the good decision. Some things in life is worth being a risk taking, risk taker, as long as you don't end up with a caretaker. Watch yourself clean as you go for your dream. Don't sacrifice what you want most for what you want the moment. Don't sacrifice what you want most for what you want more. Thank you. Hey. In closing, you must accept full responsibility for your actions. The world does not give a damn about your feelings. You will be competing against others at all times, but I believe the greatest competitor is the person within. Be the person who is resilient and accept challenges ahead of you. Forge ahead of greatness. You are affecting future generations in your family. You may be able to change the world. One decision that you make can only change the family or the world. You will never know where your interests will start or stop. Leave a legacy for the generations to come. You will never be forgotten if you put others before you. If who I am is what I have, and what I have is lost, then who am I? I'm going to repeat this to you. Absorb it. If who I am is what I have, and what I have is lost, then who am I? Nothing. It's pretty darn powerful that you have the ability, know the responsibility to live your life in a way that's going to impact your family, and the society around you. Use your gifts from God to make your family proud. Be passionate about your dreams. A human soul on fire is unstoppable. Do something. Change your family's lives. Change your friends' lives. Change society. Change the world. Never stop believing. Never give up. Never, ever, ever quit. Why not you? Do something. Make history. Why not you? Thank you for allowing me into your lives. You rock my world. I ain't going to wish you good luck in the future. I am going to tell you a cause and effect out of it. Take full responsibility. The buck stops here. Go after it. That's 2017. Why not you? Thank you. I love you. And God bless.
José Alexis Avila Chacón. Chloe Jade Mason Carr. Nicholas Scott Rivera. Justin Kirk Martinez. Wyatt Paul Johnson. Silas Moses Lopez. Samuel Dean Reynolds. Thank 